Find each of the following, simplifying your answer wherever possible. So integrating these are all integrating standard functions. I like to use the inverse chain rule. Inverse chain rule tells me that I'm going to do the chain rule in reverse, which means the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide coefficient by the derivative of the inside function. That's because the last step of the chain rule is to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So that undoes that step. And then finally, second step, first step of the chain rule is to differentiate the outside function. So the second step of the inverse chain rule is going to be to integrate the outside function. And what happens here at this step, just like when we do the differentiation, is leave inside function. Now this inside this kind of inverse chain rule only works for functions which have linear functions embedded inside the outside function but in terms of the specification for C3 that's all you're going to be working with so we know that we're going to be able to work with that. So AI integrating cos of 2 minus 5x dx so divide the coefficient, coefficient is 1 I'm going to divide that by the derivative of the inside function, so I'm going to divide by minus 5, so I get minus 1 fifth. Integrate cos, cos integrates to sine 2 minus 5x, and I'm done, so that's plus c. Part 2. I'm going to integrate for over e to the 3x minus 2. However, we could rewrite this to make life easier. We might be tempted to think this is log, but this isn't a linear function. e to the x isn't a linear function. So what I want to do is rewrite it in a way such that I can integrate it. This is the same as 4 e to the minus 3x minus 2 dx. In fact, I'm going to rewrite that again, just tidy it up and make it a little bit easier. This is the same as 4e. Uh, the minus 2 becomes plus 2, so I get 2 minus 3x dx. Now, integrating should be fairly straightforward. Divide the coefficient by the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of the inside function is minus 3, so I get minus 4 thirds. Integrate e to the 2 minus 3x, I get e to the 2 minus 3x, and then I get my constant of integration. Okay, so at this stage, let's do part three. So I've got five, I've got the integral of, not six, sorry, so the five over one sixth x minus three dx. Now this function on the bottom is a bracket to the power of minus one, so this is going to integrate to log. So five is the coefficient. I'm going to divide by the derivative of the inside function, so let's divide by 6. Log of that inside function, so 1 sixth minus uh, x minus 3. We just tidy this up first of all, so flip the fraction upside down and multiply by it. I get 30 log of 1 sixth x minus 3. And don't forget your constant of integration at the end there. Okay then, well let's have a look to see how you get your marks in this question. If you have got that the outside function integrates to sine of 2 minus 5x, you get a method mark. If you get the coefficient correct, you get an accuracy mark. If you get, working through this question, that the outside function integrates to give you e to the 2 minus 3x, you get a method mark. If you get the coefficient correct, we get an accuracy mark. Finally, last question. If you get that the outside function has integrated to log 1 sixth x minus 3, you get a method mark. And if we get the coefficient correct, you get an accuracy mark. OK, well, let's look at part B. Part B wants us to evaluate from 2 to 6 
4x minus 1, square root of 4x minus 1 dx. So I'm in, looking to integrate from 2 to 6. 4x plus 1 to the power of a half dx. So I'm still using the chain rule here. Integrate the outside function. So I'm going to get 4x plus 1. Raise the power, it comes to 3 over 2. And so I'm going to divide by that new power, that's integrating the outside. I'm now also going to divide by the derivative of the inside function. So that means I multiply the co-denominator by 4. And then evaluate that between 2 and 6. Simplifying this expression, on the numerator, 3, 3 over 2 times 4 gives us 6. I'm going to take that outside. It's just a constant. So now I just have to evaluate 4x to the power of 1. That's sorry, 4x plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 in between 2 and 6. So substituting that value in, I get 4 lots of 6 plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4 lots of 2 plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2. At this point, I've gone through the substitution, and so all I want to do is evaluate this using a calculator. So evaluating this using a calculator, we should get 49 over 3 as an exact answer, or you can give a reasonably rounded answer. Now, in terms of method marks here, again, very similar to before, if you've actually got 4x plus 1 to 3 over 2, over 3 over 2 part, you can have a method mark. If you've then got also multiplying by 4, you can have the accuracy mark. So then, method mark is given if you've done some sort of correct substitution into your tidy up expression. And then finally, your accuracy mark is given if you've evaluated to an answer that is equivalent to 49 over 3. Assuming, of course, if you've done decimals, you've stated your rounding. Okay, well, I hope that all made sense and that you were able to understand my explanations.